So for this particular tutorial, I'll be using mica powders and I'm going to be using a selection of colours because I usually use this 35 box mica powder set and you've seen me use it loads of my other videos. You know that they work really well in resin, even though they're not particularly made for resin. They're cosmetic grade and you make soaps and candles, etc. out of it. But I have loved them in resin and these are the larger jars. They're the 10 grams, 0.35 ounces. So I ordered myself the other set. They come in two different box sets, which is double the amount of colours and half the size. So you get much less in there, but you've got a much better selection of colours. And they have five glows and they can be rather difficult to see what these glows do in the jar because some of them all look basically white and if you flick it to the sun you can sort of in the light see the, what that interference colour will be but I have a top tip for you is to paint the tops of them so you know exactly what you're getting inside. So I have got this UV resin and I've bought this from Art Cabuchon and I'll list it down below for you. This is a great resin it's got a lovely thin tip Plus it's quite liquidy and that suits me. My previous res UV resin that I was using was really thick and gloopy and I couldn't make it work. So I put a little bit of this on the top. I take a little bit out of the jar, twirl it around with a stick, put it under the UV lamp for a couple of minutes. And then on each of these, you've got the glow. So you can tell that the sage glow has got a green interference hue. The ballerina glow has got a purpley, no, a pinky glow to it. The periwinkle glow has got a blue, lovely blue interference hue. The gold glow has got a gold hue to it. And then the bubblegum glow has got this absolutely gorgeous iridescent purple. And I've also done the same for a couple of the other colours. When I'm not quite sure what they do, put a little bit of UV resin on the top. And then I can see if they match the colour. They do change when they're in resin, so you do have to you do have to experiment. And it's the same with the whites. They all look the same inside the jar, but they really do do different things. So there you go. I'll be using a selection of these colours because I just couldn't decide which ones. And I thought, why not go for it? Let's have some fun and let's just do six different colours and we'll see how they turn out. You can see that in some of these I have these little silicone inserts and I'll explain to you what those are. I got these from Art for Start and you they are made out of silicone and they've been molded in the shape of the inside of a druzy from a natural agate. There's that one then there's a smaller version and you just place them flat side down. You can see there's a flat side there. Flat side down uh, in the center of your mold and you can use any mold for this. This is a homemade mold, but you can use a regular silicone mold, such as this one. You could use this and you could place that in the center. And I'll show you how to take that off when we get to the end of this process. So I have that one there and then I've got two more. So it came in a little pack of these really gorgeous little druses and each one is different so that means that each one of your coasters will be individual. And to prepare everything what I like to do is get yourself a household uh, wet wipe and some kitchen paper and I like to just clean the back of these um, little druzy inserts but it's really the same for any type of silicone mold that you use. It's good to prepare it so it's nice and clean. And then do the same for the inside of your mould and make sure you wipe down properly with some kitchen paper to get rid of all the moisture because resin and moisture do not mix very well and it could cause your resin not to cure properly so make sure you don't skip this step. Then you take the flat side down, you can see, put it down there and push it down. That's it. I also like to cover the top of the druzy with a little bit of the mica powder just to give it an extra bit of pizzazz. So just take a clean, dry paintbrush, dip it in, and let's just tap gently all the way around. Now 
So I have calculated that I'll need around 330-ish uh, millilitres of resin for all of these six. So I am going to be using the one-to-one -one ratio, so I need 170 of each, so I'm going to round it up to 340. Always make a little bit more, you never know. So 170 each using my handy little chart, and if you want one of these downloadable for free, do check out my thank you giveaway video that I made, uh, I think it's previous two or three videos back. To mix this I've got this handy little spatula, silicone spatula, and I'll list this down in the description in case you're interested. Just makes things a little easier for when you want to scrape it out after. So I've got that gorgeous pink here, it's the rose pink. And I've just put one of these scoops inside, just one. So we'll start with the main colour, the pink, and I'm going to put it all around the edge. And that really is a gorgeous pink, I love that. So all the way around the edge until I've used up everything in there. And I haven't measured this out particularly, they don't all have to be equal, you can do as much um, pink as you want or as little pink as you want and I'm going to use this handy little little mini spatula just to scrape all the leftovers out oh that is gorgeous I can pour in the ballerina glow which I've put in about two of these I wanted it quite concentrated and I'm just going to simply pour it on top of that little druzy right over the top in a circular motion if you wish and then to reuse this I'm just going to wipe it off with one of those household wet wipes followed by kitchen paper to dry off any of the moisture okay so let's continue with the gorgeous turquoise blue here And if I'm a bit quiet, it's because I'm concentrating. <laughs> I'll leave you with the birds. Then let's do the gorgeous crystal white in the middle. Color is this? This is bright blue. So same thing all the way along the edge. And I might not have done enough blue here, but not a problem. I've still got loads of clear left. So I'll make up some more. So let's make up a little more. And then we can go back in. And then in with the, I think it's periwinkle, periwinkle glow. Yes, that's the one. Right in the centre. Then I am going to do the spring green in the same way clean that off 
and then go in with the sage glow. Make sure that's all nicely and mixed up. It does look like it is. And then right on the top of that silicone insert. And there as well, I may need some more. So let's put some more in. Let's mix up what's remaining in there. And then pull the rest in. We're going to start with the brown. And this is just to remind me caramel brown. Followed by the gold glow. This is amethyst purple. Let's shake that around. It's been sitting there for a bit. Around the edge. And with it, some bubblegum glow. So let's get this bubblegum glow going. Right on the top. And this, I can tell, will also need a little bit more than I have given it. So let's just add some to the same pot. And then... Mix it around with the leftover. You can tell it's got that gorgeous purple hue to it. And on we go. And so we really do want it to come right up to the top, so if I need to, I'll go around at eye level, check all of the levels and see if I need to add any more. I've got some clear, so you just add a little clear on the top, in the middle, right in the middle, and then you just let this dry overnight. Before you do that, you can go around quickly with a torch gun and just get rid of any excess bubbles that you see, this one over there. So it's had a whole night's cure and I am going to unmold them. Just going to gently push back on the sides so that this silicone can come off. And that looks really great. I love that effect, that is so funky. And that's the back. So you can see it's got a nice little bit of um, transparency in the middle and that's from putting the clear right at the end once you've let it all settle in a bit 
let's do the blue and that's the blue that's a gorgeous blue oh how pretty is that I have some brains clouds I'm not quite sure it's really nice so that's that one and then we get on to the druzy ones so let's unmold the druzy ones that's that front side and that's the back side now sometimes what happens is a little bit of that resin will go on top of the druzy on the other side but it's a really really fine layer of resin you can see I'm just picking it off with my hands try your best just to do it this way first before you start getting out um, pen knives or, or scissors or any tools you might scratch that silicone insert so there it's that thin really wafer thin and then once you've cracked that off I think that's it there you can just peel back very gently and you're going to I've got quite sharp nails but you might not have and there and I've just released it there and once you've done that just wiggle it out and there you go Look at that gorgeous effect so you could choose the side that you like best I think that's a pretty cute side that that's that one let's do the second one and the same thing here there, just a slight layer you can even just crack it let's go all the way around now if you didn't have sharp nails like me go and get yourself a toothpick I'll get one just to show you but do be careful when you do this so just slip it under and then crack it off very gently and I think that's it got to the end and then once again just pull back on it you can just rub the finger and again just gently pop that in release one corner and once you've released one corner just wiggle it out oh and that's great that's left a lovely a lovely effect there that's gorgeous let's do the other two and that's got a little less of the I'm just going to pop it out but I'm quite used to doing these but obviously use the previous method if you're not sure and then that might happen it might get a little stuck there again there's just a little wafer of a layer there so do be careful but just get that under and then wiggle it out And you could, if you wanted to, use um, just a little nail file and clean that edge up as you go. I love that. That's gorgeous. That's what it looks like from that side. So if you wanted it, you could flatten it down there. And you could see all that gold glow. That's really gorgeous, the gold glow. And that's that lovely purple. And let's do this one. And there got a little bit of thin wafer thin resin sometimes it doesn't happen and sometimes it does it depends how well I I tack it down to the base of that uh, mold now my uh, coasters are not that thick so that's why they didn't quite come up to the top but normally this front area would be completely flat if you had a much thicker mold but I don't mind that look I think it looks more authentic there we go I've got that side up and then wiggle it out there 
but you've got different sizes, various sizes. And I think it looks great. Now with this one, what I'm going to do, because I prefer this side, and that doesn't look very great there, this is what I'm going to do. Get myself a stick, and I'm going to carefully poke through. Not too brutishly, but just enough so that I create a hole. And there I prefer that. Then again, I can clean up those sides there. And that's really nice. That really does look authentic. And you can see where I've put the glow on the actual druzy. It's extra shiny. And I think we've done them all. So I'm going to go off and tidy them up. And just another tip if you just want to clean that up, you can just use a little bit of soap, dish soap and warm water and clean them up under the sink for the next time.